What is going on, everyone? We're back again with another video with some breaking news. Philip Petrusif of the Gonzaga Bulldogs has announced... Well, not announced. He has withdrawn from the NBA draft. Uh, he will not be in the NBA draft anymore. He is just going to stick to playing Serbian ball, because if you didn't know, he's from Serbia originally. And then he started going to Gonzaga. Uh, and, yeah, that was, it was a big blow to l learn that during this pandemic, he decided to go play professional basketball in Serbia, his hometown, home country, I mean. Uh, and once you play professional ball, no matter where it is in the world, you cannot go back to college basketball. So he is no longer Gonzaga Bulldog, uh, at least on their roster this year. And never will be again because he's playing professional basketball in Serbia. But he is not going to be in the NBA, at least this draft, which is really too bad because I love seeing Gonzaga players make it to the NBA. And I really think he could have, especially if he would have sticked with Gonzaga, stuck with Gonzaga for one more year, like Corey Kisper and Joel Ayayi did. I think that was a great move. Uh, and it looks like the only Gonzaga player going to the NBA this year is going to be Killy and Tilly, probably getting drafted around the 40 to 45 range. Uh, and yeah, I'm excited to see if he ends up on a team with another Gonzaga player, like Trailblazers. Wizards would be crazy because the Wizards already have Jonathan Williams and Ruby Hachimura. Uh, the Grizzlies could be one that Heat... The Jazz, all these other teams, he has potential of uh, playing with, or he could, you know, just really any, any team that has a draft pick in that range, you could expect to see. I don't think Ryan Woolridge is going to make it to the NBA, probably some summer league, and then he'll probably go play some international basketball for his career. Uh, but Philip Petrusa, for now, is not going to be an NBA player. Which I, just blows my mind because one time I met him in a Walgreens just totally randomly. My mom was feeling sick. We went into a Walgreens, uh, like when we were going on, going to go on vacation, and him and Greg Foster Jr., a former a former Zag, were in there together, and it was they were so tall. Like when I mean tall, they were they were tall. Petrusif is seven feet tall. And Greg Foster was like 6'5", but they just both looked extra, extra tall. And this was literally the next day, like the next morning. This was probably 8 in the morning, 9 in the morning, after they lost in March Madness. And this wasn't uh, last year because there was no March Madness. It was the year before when Petrusif wasn't too great yet, but it, you could kind of see it was coming. And it was the next morning, and they were just getting like some candy and stuff. I just can't believe that they were already back, and then they were like, yeah, let's just get up this early and go to Walgreens. That was pretty crazy to me. They were probably roommates or something, but <clears throat> I'm really surprised he didn't decide to go into the NBA. Um, I'm sure he could probably make more money in Serbia and it's his home country, so that probably had a ton to do with it as well. But, yeah, I don't know really what to say. I think it will be a little bit of a hit for Gonzaga missing him. Um... We're going to have Timmy, who probably could make it to the NBA if he develops the way he has been, keeps developing. Uh, and then we have another player like Amaro Ball, who's a big center from Africa, I believe, uh, who I think is going to be very well. I'm very, very high on his potential. And then we have, uh, I think we have some other centers. But Gonzaga, like, historically is one of the best, I would say the best, recruiting team college basketball team for international players like we got DeMontis Sabonis NBA All-Star uh Shimit Karnowski from Poland Canada doesn't, doesn't really count but we have a ton of Canadian players like Kevin Pangos Kyle Wilcher who became an NBA player Philip Petrusif from Serbia Amaro Ball from Africa uh Hakob Larsen from Denmark who ended up I believe transferring away uh, and just many, many other players that have turned out to be very, very well. Joel Ayayi from France. Uh, a ton of other players that are just very, very successful. Uh, Olenek from K 
Canada, Clark from Canada. I don't count those, the Canadian ones, really. Rui Hachimura from Japan. That's a big one. And look how good he was in college and his potential in the NBA. Uh, very, very good potential, I would say. Uh, but going back to Petrusev, I just really thought that he, his shot was developing nicely. His inside, he was doing way better, less soft for sure. And really just playing like a Gonzaga big man, like filling that role perfectly. And I think he could have helped a lot. Imagine if we still had him on the team we have this year. It would be crazy. Like, I would say this year we didn't lose too much. We didn't lose, like, a ton. Like, think of a couple years ago when we lost Brandon Clark, Rui Hachimura, Zach Norvell Jr., uh, Jeremy Jones. I think those were the four we lost that were just, like, super, super good. They all went and played professional basketball. Three of them made it to the NBA. And then a fourth one going and playing, I believe, in Europe, which is the second best. Euro, Euro basketball is the second best league in the world. Uh, and then, like, we've lost our entire start, entire starting lineup before. We've, we're have we just always losing a ton of players. Uh, lost Gino Crandall. That's another player. I don't know what, what happened to him, but he's gone. Uh, we had four rookies in the NBA this season. Gonzaga's growing, for sure, especially with, like, NBA professional talent. Like, Nigel Williams-Goss was a rookie technically this year. He got drafted in, I believe, the 2018 draft. But he was a rookie this year because he just got signed this year. Or last year, technically, now. Uh, then we had Brandon Clark, all-rookie first team. Rui Hachimura, all-rookie second team. Zach Norvell Jr. played very, very, very well in Summer League. Made the Lakers roster. The champion Lakers roster. They ended up cutting him, though. To sign Devontae Kaycock, another rookie. And then he was on the Lakers G League team. Got traded to the Warriors G League team. And then got minutes. And play, got a 10-day contract, which they did not re-sign after it was over. Still did play really good for them. Uh, For one of the best teams in the NBA, the Golden State Warriors. I know last year they were the worst team in the NBA. But, like, over the past six years... They've won three championships, should have won four, really should have won five, if we're being honest. So really, really good teams that he's played for. The championship team this year, championship team three years ago. Uh, well, I don't know if that, you consider that three years or two years ago. But yeah, the 2018 finals. Um, And man... We had some very good players. Nigel Williams, Goss, and Zach Collins, not really, or I mean, Zach Norvell not playing too much. But Petrusev could have been a rookie with Tilly. That would have been cool to see two rookies. Uh, probably just have one this year, though. Um, I'll be excited to see where he goes. I just have a slight feeling he's going to the Timberwolves. I don't know why. It just that That's where I feel like he's going to end up. So I just hope whichever team he goes to has a cool jersey and I can, you know, get the cool jersey, get some rookie cards of him. Very cool. And I hope Petrusev ends up joining the NBA uh, pretty soon. Hopefully he doesn't wait till like the very end of his career, like Arvita Sabonis. I hope he actually does decide, okay, I'm more experienced from playing professional basketball in Europe, best, which is the best, uh, second best league in the world. Now I'm going to go over to America, play in the NBA, and now I'm going to have way more potential than I would have just playing college because that's what a lot of players are starting to do now, either go to the G League or go play internationally because they're like, like this is going to give me better experience. I'm going to play against professional guys that are like a, that were at the top of the top in college. So they're going to be very good players in general. Like think of it, think of it this way. When people always would say like the Duke uh, Blue Devils could have not this year's team. The team with Zion Williamson, R.J. Barrett, and Cam Reddish, and Trey Jones could have beat the Cleveland Cavaliers that year. That the Duke was like that. I say it would be a good game, but you have to think of it this way: all those Cavaliers players, every single one of them, if that came from college, were good players in college. 
So that would mean that like the Duke, all of Duke would have to be NBA level. Every single person on that team would have to be NBA level. But they're all they're not not all of them are like all the walk ons. None of them are NBA level. Every single player, all the way down to the worst player in the Cavaliers, is very very good at basketball. So that's one way I look at it, and I don't think everyone looks at it the same way I do. You just got to think deeper about things like that. Like, man, like Jose Calderon in his very last years, I think he's retired. I believe he is. He's got to be. Was still way better basketball player than anyone that I've ever played against. And that's just because he's an NBA player. Even if they don't look good on TV, they're still amazing. Like, you might... People are always talking about how bad certain players are. They're still a really good basketball player. Like sometimes I see like players like Frank Nidalekina, Kevin Knox, and I'm like, those guys are trash. They would whoop me. They would absolutely whoop me. Thank you guys so much for watching. Go check out the last video. Subscribe if you haven't already. Go subscribe to the main channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys next time.